not when there's been videotaped for the whole world to see. Oh, by the way, those of you who have Facebook, please go on Shakespeare on Sunday and see a marvelous, <laughs> see a marvelous uh, introduction to Shakespeare speakings uh, done by Cicely Berry, who is the voice teacher at Royal Shakespeare Company. Been there for 40 years. She passed away, I think, in a couple of years ago. But yeah, it's, it's an amazing little yeah. adventure between uh, the different characters and how she uh, works with people about them. And even, even taking it to uh, different parts of Africa and with prisoners in, uh, in jail and um, just all sorts of wonderful adventures that she has had uh, as, a, um, as a teacher. And Jim. Hey, Jim. Hi. Did I ever tell you that when I was living in London, I attended a workshop that she conducted? Yes. We have you on video. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We sat around a circle on the floor. I was amazed that she was so, be in, so uh, you know, in, informal, and it was wonderful. Oh, even more so. She, was, she talks uh, about different uh, directors. Uh, uh -huh. Richard Iyer is one of them. Uh, the other one is John, uh, da, 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 who did the play, but John like, Barton, John. And, and the third one I had never heard of, Terry Hands. Oh, and yeah, yeah, I've heard of him. Terry Hands uh, did the uh, history plays, and he preferred to do it loud and fast, according to her, and so she uh, taught the students to do it slow and emotional you know so uh, and, and whispering even so it's an entirely different uh, technique than um, what the directors are familiar with but it helps get through to the text if you have read your roles ahead of time you'll know exactly what I mean by that as to what the individual uh, roles sound like. And uh, you, you can sense the evil in some of the roles uh, that you're playing. And uh, I even had the silly uh, drunken guy, so I am supposed to be drunk during that whole scene. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know where. So MacBook Pro, that's Peter, right? MacBook Pro. No? I guess Peter. Peter. Yes. Do you, do you want to change Pro. your name? Do you want to change your name so you're not MacBook Pro? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really easy. <laughs> I didn't know it was down on MacBook Pro. Okay, well that's what I got. So Yeah, it's in your it's in your uh, box that you're in. I, d I had no idea. So follow along here it's just a couple of steps so if you just uh scroll your mouse down to the bottom of your screen yeah and you see participants down there my my name yeah and oh then okay click on, then click on okay okay and not prospero <laughs> no <laughs> click on prospero yeah i see a lot of those in Toastmasters meetings too, like iPhone or just whatever the device name is. I had uh, Jay Hesse in Hawaii, uh, 808, that, the whole thing. And uh, I had that changed. I let them do the changing. As a side note, that doesn't show up on recording. Oh, well, Mongoose Max does. It shows up on your viewing screen. Yes. And when you, when you record it, like you're doing right this minute, did yeah. you know you're recording? Yeah, because it's all got plenty of, junk when it records. You got plenty of tape. 
It records okay. right on my computer. All right. Well, what it does is it does this whole little thing, and if you pause, it'll stop there. And I then see. you start with no just people, one recording, and then it converts and goes onto your computer. And you know when it does that? It's a pretty small file. It's not really huge. Interestingly enough. Hopefully Mike is not late. Let's play with things. I see the only person we're waiting for. Uh, Mike and then Leilani, I guess, is coming back. Yeah, and she's, she'll be right back. She just what about Uma? Out. Is Uma coming? Uma is scheduled. Hi, uh, Ruby. Hi. Ruby. Don't you take can. your sons to town. Yeah, good to see you too. Hi. Don't take your sons to town. <laughs> <laughs> I always think, I always think yeah, of the Ruby's old uh, Victor Young song, Ruby. Da, 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 de, da. Oh, good. yeah. Yeah, I like that. I, that. I like the one where uh, Ruby, don't take your, don't take your love to town. That, that, yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ruby, uh, do you have like a smudge? Yeah, take it. Whatever. Ruby, you got like a smudge on your lens or something? Yeah, hold on just a sec. It's all blurry. Clean me, clean me. It's probably the glue from the tape. Oh, you I, have I, a piece of tape over it? I always tape it because... That looks better already. You put a tape? Ever, ever since I bought it, this is, um, I have a different one that I told you I was going to use, but I haven't gotten that thing uh, where where it's set up yet, but I will. <laughs> this one is old. This is an old Apple I got. So and you got a tape over the camera? When I first bought it, I bought it like in 2009. Oh, I see. And I remember I saw something and it said, you know, that camera, if you don't tape it, it's uh, you got back doors and all of these applications, right? Programs. So. Never heard that. I, I taped it because, uh, well, you don't want any eye open. I, I even have my phone with a little. Yes, yes. Yeah. All right. How many have the script with them tonight? Scrolling script. Okay. I was lucky. I scored a small book from Good. Annie. There so, it is. So I can read it easily here. Easy here. <laughs> ah, new English word. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you got that from Annie? Yeah, I told her we were doing the play tonight, and I said, I hate that. She said, you got a Riverside? And I said, yeah, a tiny print. She said, I got a tiny one you can, you can borrow. And I said, okay. So <laughs> It's so funny. The next three plays I had to order from the library because I don't have, uh, well, I have Henry VIII, but I'd like to get a larger print. So we'll see. But uh, yeah. yeah. All right, we're wearing my t-shirt tonight that uh, advertises. Can you see? <laughs> Hello, Una. Hi. There's Una. Hi, Una. Hi. Hi. Una Stella. <laughs> 007. All right. Yes. So Mikey is our Prospero, and he should be walking in the door any second. If not, we're in trouble. <laughs> um, I'll mention again the little uh, thing that I talked about a little bit ago. And uh, Ruby, I think I sent this an email to you uh, just about a half hour or so ago. Mm -hmm. Um, there's Mikey. Um, the uh, and also um, I sent it to Mikey and sent it to Leilani by email. It's Cicely Berry, who is a wonderful voice teacher for the Royal Shakespeare Company, and I recommend you totally listening to that video. It's only maybe 10, 12 minutes long, but her, her style, her memories are just so fascinating. And I, I totally recommend it to you. There's Daniel and Michael. 
Daniel, welcome, welcome. Daniel, 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 come on in. Where are you? I think he's got to hook up the sound first. Michael, sure. you're all hooked up? I got to I gotta go. I gotta... Somebody said something. Hey, Lonnie. Can you hear me? Michael. I can hear you, Michael. Ooh. You can hear me? Yeah. Okay, cool. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. <laughs> Can't see you. You're top of theirs. You're not missing anything. Daniel. And then he. Right. Um, Let's save it for the break. We'll talk about okay. it. Um, we're at 704 and Leilani has. I got some bad. Okay. I got some bad news for you. It looks like she's going to have to go. Oh, okay. Uh, Ruby steps in for Miranda. Okay. And Una steps in for Ruby's role of... Da -da 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 Where is... Oh, my goodness. Ruby, what do I have you down? Oh, there is Trinkula. Do you want to play a jester? Yes, sir. Yep. Una? Hello? I'm sorry. Do you want to play a jester? Trink okay. Low is the, the funny guy. Okay. <laughs> so, what's his name? His name is T R I N C O L O. So he's Trink a funny guy. -O, right? Hmm? C U L O. He's a funny right? guy. Once again, Una. You said that's a funny guy? Uh, well, yes, he's, he's the court jester, and oh. he's part of the shipwreck. Okay. Now, speaking of the shipwreck, uh, is going to make a post-production um, sound effects with it, and so we hope that turns out well. Um, but I hope that we can top everything that we've learned about acting as to being scared to death on a shipwreck uh, about, about to die. It's because we have no clue as to, you know, how this is happening or uh, what's making it happen. So anyway, you are going to be those people who not to necessarily scream and shout over the um, over the sound effects and that sort of thing, but when your when your role comes up in the uh, in the script, uh, if you would speak it a little bit more frightened, a little bit more uh, scared, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. So, uh, so, are you just about ready for what you want? Sound effects here? No, no. I just want to make sure you are. Pushing the right button, and we are ready. <laughs> That's yeah. not the VX effects I wanted to hear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a part of it. Now, you don't have to play it from back to the ground of us, do you? No, no, I don't have to. Yeah, but we can save it. Huh? Yeah, you can just save that. So let's start with Act 1, Scene 1 with um, whatever wind effects you can make or thunder, uh, that might help. Uh, remember that anything too loud is going to drown out the other voice uh, that is speaking. So this is a really crazy uh, Zoom situation. Yeah, you got to talk loudly, I think, or something. You're not just going to keep it playing the whole time, are you? <laughs> I'll, no, I'll, this is just this whole uh, scene, maybe uh, six to eight minutes long. Why? You can't make that much noise? Wait a minute. Uh, yeah. Okay. This might... I don't know how loud it's going to... I turned down my speaker, okay? okay. Well, you can, you can add it in later, right? Uh, yeah. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Is that too loud? Can't hear it. Can't even right, hear it. Here we go. Uh, 
shipmaster. Is, I can't say that. Um, and then you were playing the bosun, the boat swain. That's me. Yes. Okay. Bosun. Here, Lester. What's here? Oh, we to speak to the mariners, call to it yearly, or we had overrun ourselves aground. Best be best, or Hi, my heart's here, truly, my heart's here, here. Take in the topsail, tend to the master's whistle, billow till thou burst thy wind, if room enough. Good folks, soon. Uh, have fear. Where's the master? Play the men. I pray now, keep the low. Oh. Where is the master, Boatswain? Do you Bozum? not hear him? You mar my labor and keep your cabins. You do assist the storm. Nay, good. Be patient. When the sea is hand, what cares these floors for the name of king? To tame silence, trouble us not. Ah, oh, good. Remember thou, remember whom thou hast aboard. Not that I more love than myself, your counselor. If you can command these elements to silence and work the peace of present, we will not have the rope more. Use your authority in consent. You cannot give thanks. You have lived so long and make yourself ready in your cabin for the mischance of the whole hour if it so have Cheerly good heart. Out of our way, I say. I have great comfort from the stove. Methinks he hath no drowning mark upon him. His confection is perfect gallows. Stand fast, good fates, and to his hanging, and make the rope of his destiny not our table, for our own dog has little advantage. If he be not born to be hanged, our case is miserable. Down with the top mess, your lower, 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 upon this lower, they are louder than lower, 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 by your art, my dearest father, you have such a wild waters in this drawer. Allay them, the sky it seems would pour down, stinking pitch. But that sea doubting in the welkin's cheek gashes the fire out. Oh, I have suffered with those that I shall suffer, a brave vessel who had no doubt some noble creature in her. Dash! All the pieces. Oh, the cry did knock against my very heart. Poor soul, said perish. Had I have been given any god of power, I would have, have sunk the sea within the earth or air. It should the good ship so have swallowed and the rotting soul within her. Be collected. No more amazement. Till your piteous heart there is no harm done. Oh, woe the day! No oh, harm. Uh, I have done nothing but in care of thee. Of thee, my daughter. Thee, my daughter, who art ignorant of what thou art, not knowing of whence I am, nor that I am more better than Prospero, master of a full poor cell, and thy no greater father. More to know. Did never meddle with my thoughts. It is time I should inform thee further. Lend thy hand and pluck my magic garment from me. Oh. Lie there, my heart. Wipe thou thine eyes, have comfort, 
the direful spectacle of the rack which cuts the very virtue of compassion in thee, I have with such provision in mine art so safely ordered that there is no soul, no, not so much perdition as a hair, be tied to any creature in the vessel which thou heard cry, which thou thought think, sit down, but thou must now know further. You have often begun to tell me what I am, but stop, and left me to a bootless inquisition, concluding, stay, not yet. Thou art thou come, the very minute bids thee ope thy ear, obey, be attentive. Can't thou remember a time before we came at the I do not think thou can. For then thou wast not out three years old. Certainly, sir, I can. By what? By any other house? Certainly. Of anything the image tell me that hath kept with thy remembrance? Tis far off, and rather like a dream than an assurance that my remembrance warrants. Had I not four or five women once then tended me? Thou hadst, and more. But how is it that this lives thy mind? What seest thou else? in the dark, backward, and abysm of time. If thou rememberest aught, ere thou camest here, how thou camest before thou But that I do not. Twelve years since, Miranda, twelve years since, thy father was the Duke of Milan and the Prince of Power. Sir, are you not my father? My mother was a piece of virtue. And she said, Thou wast my daughter, and thy father was Duke of Milan, and his only heir, a princess, no worth issue. Oh, the heavens! What foul play had we, that we came from thence? For well, blessed wasn't we did. Both, both, my girl. By foul play, as thou sayest, were heaved thence, but blessedly, all hither. Oh, my heart bleeds to think of the team that I have turned. You two, which is from my remembrance, please you, father. My brother and thy uncle, called Antonio, a great mock, that a brother should be so perfect. He whom, next thyself of all the world, I love, to him, Put the manage of my state, as at that time, though all the signatories, signiories, it was the first, and Prospero the prime duke, being so reputed in dignity and for the liberal art, without a parallel, those being all my study, the government I cast upon my brother, and to my state grew strange, being transported and wrapped in secret study. Thy false uncle, dost thou attend me? Sir, most heedfully. Being once perfected how to grant suits, how to deny them, who to advance and who to trash for overtopping, the new created, new created the creatures that were mine, I say, or changed them or else new formed them, having both the key of officer and office, set all hearts and state to what tune it pleased his ear, that now he was the ivy which had hid my princely trunk and sucked my verdure out on it. Thou attendest not. Oh, good sir, I do. I pray thee, Mark, I thus neglected worldly end all dedicated to closeness and the bettering of my mind with that which, by, but by being so retired, overprised all popular rate in my false brother awaked an evil nature, and my trust, like a good parent, did beget of him a falsehood, in it in contrary as great as my trust was, which had indeed no limit. A confident and bow. He being thus lauded, not 
me with what my revenue yields, but what my power might else it act, like one who having unto truth by telling of it, made such a sinner of his enemy, credit don't lie. He did believe he was indeed the duke. Out of the substitution that executed the outward peace of royal peace with all prerogative, hence his ambition growing. Is thou here? Your tale, sir, would cure deafness. To have no screen between this part played and him he played it for, he needs will be absolute elan. Me, poor man, my library was dukedom large enough. Of temporal royalties, he thinks me now incapable. Confederate, so dry he was of way, with the king of Naples, to give him annual tribute, do him homage, subject his coronet to the crown, and bend the dukedom, yet unbowed, alas, the land, to most ignoble stooping. Oh, the heavens! Mark his condition and the event, and tell me if this might be a brother. I should sin to think but nobly of my grandmother. Good wombs have borne bad sons. Now, the condition, this king of Naples, being an enemy to me inveterate, hearkens my brother's feet, which was that he in lieu of the premises of homage, and I know not how much tribute, should presently extirpate me and mine out of the kingdom and confer a fair Milan with all the honors on my brother, whereon a treacherous army levied, one midnight fated to the purpose, did Antonio open the gates of Milan, and in the dead of darkness the ministers for the purpose hurried thence be and thy crying self. Alack, for pity! I, not remembering how I cried out then, will cry it or again. It is a hint that brings mine eyes to it. Here, yeah, a little uh, and Then I'll bring thee to the present business which now is upon us. Without the wit, this story were most impertinent. Wherefore did they not that hour destroy us? Well, the man with wench, my tale provokes that question. Here... Yeah. They durst not so dear the love my people bore me, nor set a mark so bloody on the business, but with colors fairer painted their foul end. In few, they hurried us aboard a bark, bore us some leagues to sea, where they prepared a rotten carcass of a boat, not rigs, nor tackle, sail, nor mast. The very rats instinctively have quitted there they hoist us to cry to the sea that roared to us, to sigh to the wind, whose pity, sighing back again, did, did us but loving wrong. Alack, what trouble was I then to you? Oh, cherubim, thou wast that did preserve me. Thou did smile, fused with the fortitude from heaven. When I have decked the sea with dropped full salt under my burden groaned, which raised in me an undergoing stomach to bear up against what should ensue. How came we ashore? By providence divine. Some food we had, and some fresh water that a noble Neapolitan, Gonzalo, out of his charity, who being then appointed master of this design, he must with rich garments, linen, stuffs, and necessaries, which since have steaded much, so with his gentleness. Knowing I love my books, he furnished me from my own library with volumes that I prize above dukedom. Would I might be ever see that man? Now I arrive. It's cool. And hear the last of our sea sorrow. Here in this island we arrive. And here have I, thy schoolmaster, made thee more profit than other princes can, that have more time for vainer hours and tutors not so careful. Heavens, 
thank you for it. And now I pray you, sir, for still to speeding in my mind your reason for raising this sea storm. No, thus far forth, by accident was great bountiful fortune. Now, my dear lady, hath mine enemies brought to this shore, and by my pressure, I find my Venus doth depend upon a most auspicious star, whose influence, if now I court not, but omit, my fortunes will ever after droop. Here cease more question, thou art inclined to the good dullness, give it way, I know thou canst not choose. Come away, servant, come, I'm ready now. Approach, my Ariel, come. All hail, great master. Grave sir, hail, I come to answer thy best pleasure, be it to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, to ride on the curled clouds, to thy strong bidding task, Ariel, and all his quality. Hast thou, spirit, performed to point the tempest that I bade thee? To every article. I boarded the king's ship, now on the beak, now in the waist, the deck, in every cabin I flamed amazement. Sometimes I'll divide and burn in many places, on the topmast, the yard and the bowsprit, where I flame distinctly, then meet and join Jove's lightnings, the precursor of the dreadful thunderclaps, more momentary and sout a sight outrunning were not. The fires and cracks of sulphurous roars, the most mighty Neptune seemed to besiege and make his bold waves tremble, yea, his dread trident shake. My great spirit! Who was so firm, so constant, that this coil would not infect his reason? Not a soul, but felt a fever of the mad, and played some tricks of desperation. All but mariners plunged in the foaming brine and quit the vessel, then all afire with me. The king's son, Ferdinand, with hair upstaring, then like reeds, not hair, was the first man that leapt, cried, Hell, Hell is, is empty, empty and all the devils, devils are here! here. Why, that, my spirit! But was not this nigh shore? Close by, my master. But are they, Ariel, safe? Not a hair perished. On their sustaining garments, not a blemish, but fresher than before. And as thou badst me, in troops I have dispersed them about the isles. The king's son have I landed by himself, whom I left cooling of the air with sighs in an odd angle of the aisle, and sitting his arm in a sad knot. Of the king's ship, the mariners say, how thou hast disposed, and all the rest of the fleet. Safely in harbor is the king's ship, in the deep nook where once thou calledst me up at midnight to fetch dew from the still vexed Bermoothies there she's hid, the mariners all under hatches stowed, whom with a charm joined to their suffered labor, I have left asleep. And for the rest of the fleet, which I dispersed, they have all met again and are upon the Mediterranean float bound sadly home for Naples, supposing that they saw the king's ship wrecked and his great person perish. Ariel, thy charge exactly is performed, but there's more work. What is the time of the day? Past the mid-season. These two uh, time trick six and now must by us both be spent most preciously. Is there more toil? Since thou dost give me pains, let me remember thee what thou hast promised, which is not yet performed me. Mm -hmm. oh, now, Moody, what is thou canst demand? My liberty. Before the time of the out, no more. I prithee, remember I have done thee worthy service, told thee no lies, made thee no mistaking, served without or grudge or grumblings. Thou didst promise to bait me a full year. Dost thou forget from what torment I did free thee? No. Thou dost, and thinkest it much to tread the ooze of the salt deep, to run upon the sharp wind of the north, to do me business in the veins of the earth when it is baked with frost? I do not, sir. Thou liest, malignant thing. Hast thou forgot the foul witch, the mm -hmm. who with age and envy was grown into a hoop? 
Hast thou forgot her? No, sir. Thou hast. Where was she born? Speak, tell me. Sir, in Argiers. Oh, was she so? I must once in a month recount what thou hast been, which thou forgettest. This damned witch Sycorax, for mischief manifold and sorceries terrible to enter human hearing, from Argier, thou knowest, was banished. For one thing she did, they would not take her life. Is this not true? Aye, sir. This blue-eyed hag was hither brought with child, and here was left by the sailor. Thou, my slave, as thou reportest thyself, was then her servant. And for thou was a spirit too delicate to act her earthly and aboard command, refusing her grand hests, she did confine thee by help of her more potent. And in her most unmitigable rage, into a cloven tine, within which rift imprisoned, thou didst painfully remain a dozen years. Within which space she died, and left thee there, where thou didst vent thy groans as fast as mill wheels strike. Then was this island, save for the sun which she did little here, a freckled whelp hag born, not honored with a human shape? Yes, Caliban, her son. Go, thing, I say so, he, that Caliban, whom now I keep in service. Now best knowest what torment I did find thee in. Thy groans did make wolves howl, and penetrate the breasts of ever angry bears. It was a torment to lay upon the damned, which Sycorax could not again undo. It was mine art, when I arrived and heard thee, that made gape the pine and let thee out. I thank thee, master. If thou more murmurest, I will rend an oak and peg thee in its naughty entrails till thou hast howled away twelve winters. Pardon, master. I will be correspondent to command and do my spiriting gently. Do so, and after two days I will discharge thee. That's my noble master. What shall I do? Say what? What shall I do? Go, so, make thyself like a nymph of the sea. Be subject to no sight but thine and mine, invisible to every eyeball else. Go, take this shape, and hither come in it. Go hence with diligence. Awake, dear heart, awake. Thou hast slept well, awake. The strangeness of your story put heaviness in me. Mm, shake it off, come on. We'll visit Caliban, my slave ever yields us kind answer. Tis a villain, sir. I do not love to look on. But as tis, we cannot miss him. He does make our fire, fetch in our wood, serves in offices that profit us. But oh, slave, Caliban, thou earth thou, speak. There is wood enough within. Come forth, I say, there's other business for thee. Come, thou tortoise, when? A fine apparition, my quaint Ariel, hark thine ear. My lord, it shall be done. Thou poisonous slave, got by the devil himself upon thy wicked dam, come forth. As wicked do as ever my mother brushed with raven's feather, from unwholesome fen, drop on you both. Southwest blow on ye and blister ye all over. For this be sure tonight thou shalt have cramps, side stitches that shall pen thy breath up. Urchin shall forth at night, uh, shall forth at vast of night that they may work all exercise on thee. Thou shalt be pinched as thick as honeycomb, each pinch more stinging than bees made them. I must eat my dinner. This island's mine, by Sycorax, my mother, which thou takest from me. When thou camest first, thou strokest me, and madest much of me, 
would is give me water with berries in it and teach me how to name the bigger light and how the less that burn by day and night. And then I love thee and show thee all the qualities of the isle, the fresh springs, brine pits, barren place and fertile. Cursed be that I did so. All the charms of Sycorax, toads, beetles, bats, light on you. For I am all the subjects you have. From first was mine own king, and here you sty me in this hard rock, whilst you keep me the rest of the island. Thou most dying slave, whom stripes may move, but not kindness, I have been thee filth as thou art with human care, and lodged thee in mine own cell, till thou didst seek to violate the honor of my child. Oh ho, oh ho, would it had been done, thou didst prevent me. I had peopled else this isle with Calibans. A borrowed slave, which any print of goodness will not take, incapable of all ill, I pitied thee, took pains to make thee speak, taught thee each hour one thing or other, when thou didst not savage know thine own meaning, but would gabble like a thing most brutish. I endowed thy purposes with words that made them known. But thy vile race, though thou didst learn, had that in it which good natures could not abide to be with. Therefore wast thou deservedly confined into this rock, who had sir, deserved more than a prison. You taught me language, and my profit on it is I know how to curse. The red plague rid you for learning me your language. Hag seed, hence, fetch us in fuel, and be quick, thou best answer other business. Shruggest thou malice? If thou neglectest or dost unwillingly what I command, I'll wrap thee with old cramps. Fill all thy bones with aches, make thee roar, that beasts shall tremble at thy din. Oh, pray thee, I must obey. His art is of such power, it would control my dam's god, Setebus, and make a vassal of him. So, slave, hence! Come unto these yellow sands, and then take hands, curtsied when you have, and kissed the wild waves, whist. Footed featly here and there, and sweet sprites the burden bear. Hark, hark, the watchdogs bark. Hark, hark, I hear the strain of strutting chanticleer, cry cock a diddle doo Where should this music be? I, the air or the earth? It sounds no more, and sure, it waits upon. Some god of the island, sitting on a bank, weeping again the king my father's wreck. This music crept by me upon the waters, allaying both their fury and my passion with its sweet air. Thence I have followed it, or it hath drawn me rather, but tis gone. Now it begins again. For fathom five thy father lies, of his bones are coral made, those are pearls that were his eyes, Nothing of him that doth fade, but doth suffer a sea change into something rich and strange. Sea nymphs our ring his knell. Hark, now I hear them. Ding dong bell. The ditty does remember my drowned father. There is no, this is no mortal business, nor so sound that the earth owes. I hear it now above me. Ranged curtains of thine eye advance. Say what thou seest beyond. What is it, a spirit? Lord, how it looks about. I believe me, sir, it carries a brave form, but it is a spirit. Oh, it eats, sleeps, and have such senses as we have. Much. This is the gallant, thou seest, was in the rack. But he is something stained with grief that beauty's canker, 
which thou mightest call him a good person. He hath lost his fellow and strays about to find them. I might call him a thing divine, for nothing natural I ever saw so noble. It goes on me as my soul comes. Spirit, kind spirit. What? Oh. Mic, your microphone. Well, it's an aside, so I was being a little bit quieter. Yeah, that's Can cool. Can you hear that? Yes. Okay. It it's goes good. on, I see, as my soul prompts it. Spirit, fine spirit, I'll free thee within two days for this. Most sure, the goddess on whom these heirs attend, vouchsafe my prayer, may know if you remain upon this island and that you will some good instruction give, how I might, may bear me here. My prime request, which I do last pronounce, is, oh, you wonder if you be maid or no. No wonder, sir, but certainly a maid. My language, heavens, I am the best of them that speak this speech, or I but where tis spoken. Oh, the best? <laughs> What wert thou if the king of Naples heard thee? A single thing, as I am now, that wonders to hear thee speak of Naples. He does hear me, and that he d does I weep myself at Naples, who with mine eyes never since at ebb beheld the king my father wrecked. Alack for mercy! Yes, Faith, and all his lords, the Duke of Milan, and his brave son, being twain. The Duke of Milan and his more braver daughter could control thee, if now were fit to do it. <laughs> At the first sight, they have changed eyes. Delicate Ariel, I'll set thee free for this. A word, good sir, I fear you have done yourself some wrong. A word. Why speaks my father so urgently? This is the third man that I ever saw, the first that e'er I sighed for. Pity, move my father to be inclined my way. Oh, if a virgin and your affection not gone forth, I'll make you the queen of Naples. Oh, sir, one word more. They are both in either's powers, but this swift business I must uneasy make, lest too light winning make the prize light. But one word more, I charge thee that thou attend me. Now thou dost here usurp the name thou owest not, and hast put thyself upon this island as a spy to win it from me, the Lord on it. No, as I am a man. There's nothing ill can dwell in such a temple. If the ill spirit have so fair a house, good things will strive to dwell with it. Follow me. Speak not you for him. He is a traitor. Come, I'll manacle thy neck and feet together. Sea water shalt thou drink. Thy food shall be the fresh brook mussels, withered roots and husks wherein the acorn cradled. Follow. No. I will resist such entertainment till mine enemy has more power. Oh, dear father, make not too rash a trial of him, for he's gentle and not fearful. What? I say, my foot, my tutor? Put thy sword up, traitor. Who makest this show but darest not strike? Thy conscience is so possessed with guilt. Come from thy ward, for I can here disarm thee with this stick and make thy weapon drop. Beseech you, father. And hang not upon my garment. Sir, have pity. I'll be his surety. I lent. One word more shall make me chide thee, if not hate thee. What, an advocate for an impostor? Hush! Thou thinkest there is no more such shapes as he, having seen but him in Caliban? Foot wench! To the most of men, this is the Caliban, and they to him are angels. My affections are the most humble. I have no ambition to see a goodlier man. Come on, 
Obey, thy nerves are in their infancy again and have no vigor in them. So they are. My spirits, as in a dream, are all bound up. My father's loss, the weakness which I feel, the wreck of all my friends, nor this man's threats to who I am subdued are but light to me. Might I but through my prison once a day behold this maid, all corners else, O the earth, let liberty make use of space enough have I in such a prison. It works. <laughs> Come on, thou hast done well, fine Ariel. Follow me. Hark what thou else hast shall do to me. Hark what thou else shalt do me. Be of comfort. My father's of a better nature, sir that he appears by speech. This is unwanted, which now came from him. Thou shalt be as free as mountain winds, but then exactly do all points of my command. To the syllable. Come, follow, speak not for him. And here we are on another seashore, and the sounds of... Alonzo, Sebastian, and others. You want, is Peter here? You want me to read Alonzo? Oh, Peter, Peter's right here. Oh, Peter's here. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're reading, um, you're reading one, two, and three of... Great, great, yeah. okay. So, yeah. here we go. I beseech you, sir, be merry, and uh, there's, uh, you have uh, cause, and so have we all of joy, for your escape is much beyond our loss. Our hint of woe is common. Every day some sailor's wife, the masters of some merchant, and the merchant have just our theme of woe, but for the miracle. I mean our preservation. A few in millions can speak like us. And then wisely, good sir, weigh our sorrow with our comfort. Privy peace. He receives comfort like cold porridge. The visitor will not give him or so. Look, he's winding up with the watch of his wit. By and by and by, he will strike. Sir, one tell. Uh, when every grief is entertained that's offered, uh, comes to the entertainer. A dollar. A dolor comes to him. And indeed, you have spoken truer than you proposed. You have taken it wiselier than I meant you should. Therefore, my lord, Fie, what a splendthrift is he of his tongue. A pretty spare. Well, I have done, but yet. He will be talking. Which of he or Adrian, for a good wager, first begins to crow? The old cock. The cockerel. Done. The wager? A laughter. A match. And though this island seem to be desert. Ha, ha, ha. So you're paid. Uninhabitable and almost inaccessible. Yet. Yet. He could not miss. It must needs to be a subtle, tender, and delicate temperance. Temperance was a delicate wench. Aye, and a subtle, as he most learnedly delivered. The air breathe upon us here most sweetly. As if it had lungs and rotten ones. Or as twere perfumed by a fen. Here is everything advantageous to life. True, saves mean to life. Or that there's none, or little. Ah, how lush and lusty the grass looks. Oh, how green. The ground indeed is tawny with an eye of green in it. He misses not much. Now, he doth but mistake the truth totally. But the rarity of it all is, uh, which is indeed almost beyond credit. As many vouched rarities are. And that 
our garments, being as they were, drenched by the sea, bold without notwithstanding their freshness and glosses, being rather once once new dyed, then stained with salt water. If but one of his pockets could speak, would it not say he lies? I, or very falsely, pocket up his report. Methinks our garments uh, are now as fresh as when we put them on the first in Africa as the marriage, at the marriage of King's fair daughter, Clarabel, and the kingdom of Tunis. Twas a sweet marriage, and we prosper well in our return. Tunis is never graced before with such a paragon to their queen. But since widow Dido's time. Widow? A pox of that. How came that widow in? Widow Dido. What if she had said widower Athens too? Good Lord, how you take it? Widow Dido say you? You make me study to that. She was a Carthage or of Tunis. This Tunis, sir, was Carthage. Carthage. I assure you, Carthage. His word is more than the miraculous harp. He hath raised the wall and houses too. What impossible matter will he make easy next? I think he will carry his island home in his pocket and give it to his son for an apple. And, sowing the kernels of it in the sea, bring forth more islands. Aye. Why in good time? Sir, we were talking that our garments seem now as fresh as when we were at Tunis at the marriage of your daughter, who is now queen. And the rarest that error came there. They, I proceed to Widow Dido. Oh, oh Widow Dido, I, Widow Dido. Ah, uh, is not, sir, my doublet as fresh as the first day I wore it? I mean, in a sort. That sort was well fished for. When I wore it at your daughter's marriage. You cram these words into mine ears against the stomach of my sense. Would I had never married my daughter there? For coming thence, my son is, is, is lost. And in my rate, uh, she too, who is far from Italy, removed, uh, and never again uh, shall see her. Oh, thine, thou, thou, mine heir, uh, Naples, Napoli, and Milan, uh, Milan, whose uh, strange fish had made this meal on thee. Yes, sir, he may live. I saw him bear the surges under him. Uh, and ride among their wax uh, backs. He prod the water with enmity. He flung aside and breasted the surge most swollen, and he met them, and his bold head above the contentious waves he kept, and oared himself with his good arms in lusty stroke to the shore that o'er his wave-worn basis bowed. And uh, stooping to relieve him, I doubt not that he came alive to land. No, no, he's gone. Sir, you may thank yourself for this great loss. That would not bless our Europe with your daughter, but rather lose her to an African, where she at least is banished from your eye, who hath cause to get wet the grief on it. Pretty peace. You were kneeled to and importuned otherwise by all of us, and the fair soul herself weighed in between loathness and obedience, at which end of the beam should bow. We have lost your son, I fear, forever. Milan and Naples have more widows in them than this business-making then we bring men to comfort them. The fault's your own. So is the dearest of the loss. Oh, my Lord, Sebastian, the truth that you speak doth back such gentleness, and time to speak it in, you rub the sore, 
and where you should bring the plaster. Very well. And most sure goodly. It's foul weather and it's all good, sir, when you are cloudy. Foul weather? Very foul. Had I a plantation of this isle, my lord? He'd sow it with nettle seed, or docks, or mallows. And were the king on it, what would I do? Escape being drunk for want of wine. Take the commonwealth, I would, by contraries, ex execute all things, for no kind of traffic would I admit. To my name of magistrate, letters should not be known, riches, poverty, and use of service, none. Contract, succession, born, bound of land, tilth, and vineyard, none. No use of metal, corn, or wine, or oil. No occupation, all men idle, all, and uh, women too, but innocent and pure. No sovereignty. Yet he'd be king on it. The latter end of his commonwealth forgets the beginning. All things in common, and nature doth produce, and uh, without sweat or endeavor, treason, felony, sword, pike, knife, gun, or need of all of the engine, and would I have not have, but nature should bring forth of it own kind, all poison, and all abundance to feed my innocent people. No marrying among his subjects? None, man, all idle, whores and knaves. Oh, I would with such perfection govern, sir, to excel the golden age. God save his majesty. Long live Gonzalo. Do you mark him, Alter, sir? Uh, prithee, prithee, no more. Thou dost talk nothing to me. Uh, I do well believe, had your highness did it to minister occasion to these gentlemen, and who are of such sensible and nimble lungs that they always used to laugh at nothing. It was you we laughed at. Who in this kind of merry fooling am nothing to you. So you may continue and laugh at nothing at all. What a blow was there given. And it had not fallen flat long. Oh, you are gentlemen of brave metal. You, you would lift the moon out of her sphere. And she, she would uh, continue it in five weeks without changing. We would so, and then go a bat fouling. Nay, hey, good my lord, be not angry. No, I warrant you. I, I will not uh, adventure my discretion so weakly. Uh, will you laugh, uh, laugh me asleep? <laughs> For I am very heavy. <laughs> Go sleep and hear us. Uh, what? Also soon asleep? With my eyes, with with themselves, shut up my thoughts. I find they are inclined to do so. Please you, sir, do not admit the heavy offer of it. It seems visits sorrow, it seldom visits sorrow. When it doth, it is a comforter. We too, my lord, will guard your person while you take your rest and watch your safety. Thank you, wondrous heavy. What a strange drowsiness possesses them. It is the quality of the climate. Why doth it not then our eyelids sink? I find not myself disposed to sleep. Nor I. My spirits are nimble. They fell together all. As by consent they dropped, as by a thunderstroke. What might worthy Sebastian? Oh, what might? No more. And yet methinks I see it in thy face. 
what thou shouldst be, the occasion speaks thee, and my strong imagination sees a crown dropping upon thy head. What? Art thou waking? Do you not hear me speak? I do. And surely it is a sleepy language, and thou speakest out of thy sleep. What is it that thou dost say? This is a strange repose, to be asleep with eyes wide open, standing, speaking, moving, and yet so fast asleep. Noble Sebastian, thou lets thy fortune sleep. Die, rather, winkest, while thou art walking. Thou dost snore distinctly. There's meaning in thy snores. I am serious than my custom. You must be so too. If heed me, which to do trebles the o air. Well, I am standing water. I'll teach you how to flow. Do so to ebb. Hereditary sloth instructs me. Oh, if you but knew how you the purpose cherish, well, thus you mock it. How in stripping it, you more invest it. Ebbing men, indeed, most often do so near the bottom run by their own fear or sloth. Prithee, say on, the setting of thine eye and check proclaim a matter from thee, and a birth indeed which throws thee much to yield. Thus, sir, although this lord of weak remembrance this, who shall be of as little memory, when he is earthed, hath here almost persuade. For he is a spirit of persuasion, only professes to persuade the king, his son, the, the king, his son's alive. Tis an impossible, tis as impossible that he is undrowned and he that sleeps here swims. I have no hope that he's undrowned. Oh, out of that, no hope. What great hope have you? No hope that way is. Another way so high a hope that even ambition cannot pierce a wink beyond. But doubt discovery there. Will you grant with me that Ferdinand, Ferdinand is drowned? He's gone. Then tell me, who is the next heir of Naples? Clarabelle. She that is queen of Tunis, she that dwells ten leagues beyond men, man's life, she that from Naples can have no note unless the sun were post, the man by the moon's too slow, till new born shins be rough and razorable, she that from whom we all were seed swallowed, though some cast again, and by that destiny to perform an act whereof what's past is prologue, what to come in yours and my discharge. What stuff is this? How say you? Tis true, my brother's daughter's queen of Tunis. So is she heir of Naples. Twixt which regions there is some space. A space whose every cubit seems to cry out, how shall that Clarabelle measure us back to Naples? Keep in Tunis, and let Sebastian wake. Say this were death, that now hath seized them, why they were no worse than now they are. There be that can rule Naples, as well as he that sleeps, lords that can prate, as amply and unnecessarily as this Gonzalo, I myself could make a chaff of as deep chat. Oh, that you bore. The mind that I do would asleep for this, for your advancement. Do you understand me? Methinks I do. And how does your content tender your own good fortune? I remember you did supplant your brother Prospero. True. And look how well my garments sit upon me. Much feeder than before, my brother's servants were then my fellows. Now they are my men. But for your conscience? Aye, sir. Where lies that? If Torah Kaib, t'would put me to a slipper, but I feel not. 
this deity in my bosom, 20 consciences that stand twixt me in Milan, candy be they, and mere ear they molest. Here lies your brother, no better than the earth he lies upon, if he were that which now he's like that's dead. Whom I, with this obedient steel, three inches of it, can lay to bed forever, whilst you, doing thus, to the perpetual wink for I, might put this ancient morsel, this Sir Prudence, who should not abrade our course, for all the rest, they, they'll take suggestion as a cat laps milk. They'll tell the clock to any business that we say befits the hour. Thy case, dear friend, shall be my precedent. Thou goest Milan, I'll come by Naples. Draw thy sword, one stroke shall free thee from the tribute which thou payest. And I, the king, shall love thee. Draw together, and when I rear my hand, do you the like to fall fall it on Gonzalo. Oh, but one word. My master through his art foresees the danger that you, his friend, are in, and sends me forth, for else his project dies, to keep them living. While you here do snoring lie, open-eyed conspiracy his time doth take. If of life you keep a care, shake off slumber, and beware, wake. Wake. Then let us both be sudden. Uh, now, good angels, preserve the king. Why, oh. how now? Uh, why, how oh, now? Wait. Oh. Are you gone? <laughs> Wherefore this ghastly looking? <laughs> oh. What's the matter? Whilst we stood here securing your repose, even now, we heard a hollow burst of bellowing, like bulls, or rather, lions. Did it not wake you? It struck mine ear most terribly. No, no, I heard nothing. Oh, twas a din to fright a monster's ear, to make an earthquake. Sure it was the roar of a whole herd of lions. I never heard this. Upon mine honor, sir, I heard a humming, and that were a strange one, too, which did awake me, and I shaked you, sir, and, and cried as mine eyes opened. I was too, uh, let's see, I saw their weapons drawn. There was a noise, and that's verily, Tis best we stand upon our ground, and or that that we quit this place, and we'll draw our weapons. Lead up this ground, and he's to make a further search for my poor son. Heavens keep him from these beasts, for he is sure in the island. Lead away. Prospero, my lord, shall know what I have done. So, king, go safely on to seek thy son. <laughs>